Hello there and welcome to this week's casual video. As you can see, it is a little bit of a different one as in front of me, I don't have a presentation, but I have a Google Sheet. It is a file that I recently created and it's kind of a tool that helps me a lot. So I thought it might make sense to share it with you. So maybe some of you find it useful as well. Now I want to start this video with the purpose of this file and what was the challenge that I had that basically this file solves. And later on, we're going to take a look at the structure of the file and how it can be used. And lastly, of course, if you want to use it, there will always be a link in the description that is free for you to download and make changes. The link itself would not be with all the companies that you see on the screen. It would contain the header that is, of course, relevant for the structure of the file and probably one or two rows uh, as an example of how the file is being filled in. And I'll get to that point why I'm not sharing all of this in a bit. Now, first of all, why I created this file, there is a simple reason, and that is over time, I have analyzed a lot of companies. If I take a look over the last five years, and that's close to 200 companies probably. And it's difficult to keep track of the analysis, especially because majority of them at the time are basically the outcome is they're overvalued and I cannot act upon my analysis. But that conclusion could change in six months, a year, maybe two, three, four years time. And of course, I won't remember those numbers by heart and I won't be spending time every day to see whether the price has changed in the way that now suddenly the conclusion has changed. So I needed some solution and there are plenty of um, software that offer creating your own watch list and maybe sending a I know, some sort of an alert if, if the price drops below a certain level. But it's kind of... Um, unflexible. There's not the flexibility that I need. And many of those are also being, um, are, are paid. So, uh, it, there wasn't any a free option that would meet my needs. So as Google provides access to the current prices, I thought I can easily build this in Google sheets. So this is basically the outcome of that. And even if you analyze one company a week, that's 52 companies a year. And that is over a hundred in two years. And over time, of course, this list keeps increasing and it's important to keep track because otherwise, not only that you can miss on something that you thought would be a good opportunity if the price goes below a certain level, but also you have a database that you can look back and basically even avoid looking at the same company multiple times from scratch. So, this list at the moment for me is not really a complete one. I only have probably like 17 companies, so not a lot, but I do add all the suggestions that come from the subscribers below and also some companies that I've heard of, but I haven't had the time to look into. So this list is, is quite long if I keep scrolling, of course. Um, and it is something that just makes my life easier. Now let's take a look at the structure. What are the information that are currently being kept in, in this file? Of course, feel free to change the file, add new columns, just make sure that it's, um, it's a file that you find useful. So the first column, the last update, basically that is the month when I've looked into a certain company for the last time. Maybe I've changed some assumptions. Maybe I just looked into it and I decided that the valuation doesn't really change. Then I have in column B the ticker. This is of course a combination of characters that is unique to every company, the company itself, and then the current price. Of course, this is simple formula that gets the current price using Google. So it fetches the data from Google. Potential buying price, of course, this is an input that comes from me. And in the link that you'll find in the description, this part will be removed for two reasons. First of all, I do not want this channel to be seen as one who suggests companies to be bought or, or sold. Uh, it's, it's purely for educational reasons. So this is just a tool that might make your life easier. But second of all, this is something that's not fixed over time. So at this moment, I think that Disney is worth around $85 a share. This could change even today if there's something significant that happens in the market. So these numbers are not fixed over time. Now, the next column, column F, basically checks if the current price is below what I've at some point considered a potential buying price. And of course, when that is the case, this would shift to yes. I can filter and see the companies that meet that criteria. And in any case, I have this percentage. So 
the, the, the potential buying price as a percentage of the current price. So just the, this kind of indicates how close a certain share price is to getting close to my potential buying price. Lastly, I have this duplicate um, column. And the main reason for that is since I get a lot of suggestions, sometimes it's a company that I've looked into, but maybe I've completely forgotten because again, looking into over 200 companies is something that uh, I cannot, I, I can definitely not remember everything that I've looked into. But on the other side, there are suggestions that come from you that are ones that I've received before, and I would not want to have them multiple times. So for example, if I, I I'll just take a, a random, entry down here but let's say here i instead of datadog i re replace this with disney obviously this is a duplicate since i have it on the top of my list and i know it is simple but it's something that just makes my life easier so i'm, I'm using this now if you take a look at the different formulas these are very simple ones so for example if the ticker that i've i have an input here in column b is not one that exists obviously the current price will turn into an error because that it does, doesn't exist. Um, the, the rest of the formulas are quite simple. One thing that could happen, and I'd like to mention this, so if, if you see, just do not spend time trying to figure out what's going on, is if you fetch too much data or if you send too many requests for the prices, because basically what happens is every time that this file is being opened, I send a request to Google to get the prices for these companies. And since that's free, there's a limit to it. If I open this file 10 times in a row in a minute, at some point, everything in column D will turn into error. Why? Because it just I've reached the limit. So this is not a file that um, I use every minute. Of course, if you use it every 10 minutes, it's fine, but I don't, I don't see the purpose of that. But if you use it once a day to just see what has happened in the meantime, that is, it, it does a great job in that sense. So other than that, of course, the more we go to the right, I have a short description. I have here in portfolio, yes or no, or basically yes or blank. And here I can filter and see the positions that are currently in my portfolio. And there are some that now do not meet the criteria anymore, but these are also positions that I've opened at lower prices. So they've gone up in the meantime. And if this discrepancy becomes too large, I'll just close these positions. And that's also what happened with Shopify last week. Now, if I go more to the right, there are a couple more columns. I have this until next earnings report and you see that there's a simple formula here. But basically what this formula does is it subtracts the date of the next report, which is a manual input, and it takes this today's date out. So it's a, a simple, um, formula and basically it says if I have a date specified here, count the number of days between that date and today. And this helps me just be aware of when is the next earnings report coming. So for example, this is probably Meta, three days, then in four days there's GoPro and Google and Amazon. So I only add the next report, the next date for the companies that at the moment I own or I own a couple of shares of. But you can also do that for companies that you are maybe close to opening a position and just would like to see the next report. I have this column here, note, if you want to note something interesting. Uh, I still need to fully fill this sheet. Uh, as I mentioned, it just, probably this is just the first version and it looks like this. It's, it's good enough for me to share with you, but probably there will be a second and third version over time. And maybe if there's some significant improvement, I'll share that as well. But for example, if you take a look at Bark, this is a company I looked into and it got even close to 1.4, even below $1.4 a share. But I have a condition there that I'd like to see first improvement in margins before I open a position. So the price, for example, is one of the conditions, but there are others that I'd like to see. And it's the same with, for example, Spotify, but I'll go into more details in a separate video on that. But this is actually what I'd like to share with you for now. Uh, again, now at least you're aware of the purpose, why I built this file, uh, how it helps me, and uh, feel free to use the link in the description to download and make changes. The only thing that I'll mention is 
please download the file. Then you can make all the changes and not request permission to edit the file. Because I oftentimes have that. And if I allow editing access, then of course this file would look completely different, but there is no reason for, for that. So please, if you want to use a file like this one, it is free. Just check the link in the description, download the file, and then make all the changes um, to it to make sure that the file is good enough and helps you. That would be all regarding this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and you find this useful. If you have any questions or comments or maybe suggestions on what could be improved, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And as always, see you in the next one.